Good morning, Warriors. Turnaround Tuesday. How's everyone doing today? Hello, David, Ron, Kevin, Tom, Zia, everybody. Lake's going to take over in a minute. I just want to update everyone. We talked EuroCAD all last week with Steve Volge. identified it as an ending diagonal. Thought we might have one more rally to one and a half. Had the breakdown yesterday. So in front of the Fed, and this is your daily look here. I hope some people were able to take advantage of this. We pounded the table on it. Uh, there was a little bit of a debate yesterday between Blake and I based upon the fact that the euro was still demonstrating relative strength. That's shifting a little bit in euro pound today. Uh, euro may actually be uh, at least as good of a short as the pound now with EG uh, pulling back a bit. So in front of the Fed, I'd be booking at least half here. Give me a Y if you're with me. And uh, it was a big trade from last week. And perhaps we're going to have an opportunity on the Fed. Let's look at some shorter time frames here. To get short on some type of rally back towards 150 in the coming days, because my view is that we're going a lot lower than this. Uh, minimum targets for me on this back to the daily is the gap back in here looking for the gap that's where the 200 comes in I've actually seen some wave counts that say that we could retrace this whole move so uh, you're not late if we get a rally this is really just beginning and again the the clue was it's called what an ending diagonal ending Ending is a very good clue, like I was saying to Blake yesterday. Okay, so that's my update here on EuroCAD. Uh, I believe that it's just starting, and we're going to look for opportunistic rallies to lay on shorts. If you did it yesterday, you're up a couple hundred pips on that. Hope you're able to at least have a small position on. Now I go into peeling back positions into the Fed and not trying to predict how the market will act on the Fed. Uh, it's pretty much baked in. We'll see what happens. Looking for the Fed to act tomorrow. And uh, now I'd like to turn it over to our CEO, Blake Morrow. Hey, Dale. How you doing? Hey, buddy. How are you? So uh, in great call yesterday, Blake. Uh, you, you said that uh, if this trade was going to work, it was going to be USD CAD weakness and CAD fell apart yesterday. It, any of the uh, crosses against CAD, you did okay yesterday. Yeah, that was so, a that was pretty pretty uh, pretty good. Like, well, luck timing wise. I mean, uh, BOC Wilkins basically is you know suggesting that they don't need to have an ultra loose policy, and the Canadian just ripped. And I, I'm, you know, we haven't seen real. Yesterday we hadn't seen good moves. I mean, it was, you know, the the FX mark was pretty benign. You know, I made, I want to say about 12 pips shorting the dollar Canadian from like 133. I want to say 133.60 something to 133.50 something. Yeah. And yeah. and I, you know, I pulled it off the table because I'm like, okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna sell a rally from here. It has been non-stop bludgeoning for yes. the dollar Canadian since then and um, so I, I'm, a, I'm a little I'm a little irked myself that I didn't uh, that I didn't um, you know stay I, I had a really sizable position because I was scalping so I was like I was like okay well you know I shorted it uh, let's see I missed this I shorted it somewhere around here and yeah. I, and I and I got you know like I said it was like 12 or 13 pips out of it and um, and I'm like okay you know we get a bounce and I was thinking to myself okay so from here you know we get a bounce back to 133.80 I'm gonna just sell some yeah that never happened I mean it's been non-stop since then so the question is what do you do with the dollar Canadian here and and, and I'll tell you what if I was if I was short the dollar Canadian which I'm not I would be covered yeah because you got horizontal support through here it, it is right. ahead of the FOMC uh, the, the the you know and I'm going to talk about it in, in two different ways you got this you know uh, the, this up, upward sloping trend line some people call this a channel 
I don't really see it as a channel. I see it more just as a major, major trend line and a false, a false break of a big wedge. So it should yeah. break down eventually. Um, but the question last is, week, last week, Blake, uh, when crude was getting hammered yeah, and yeah. Canada couldn't even rally back above five and a half was a pretty good market tell. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. It, it was. I mean, that, those are the, those are the things I was talking to Steve Volge yesterday and um, he goes, you know, the price action has just been so poor in the, the dollar Canadian. I mean, it just, it makes sense that it went down. And, uh, plus you know, the positioning, plus the positioning that you had been mentioning for two weeks, you know, record, uh, record yeah. uh, positions, spec yeah. positions. There's like 94,000 contracts, you know, short the Canadian currency. It's like, okay, well, you know, you knew it was going to you know, eventually happen. Um, and it did, and it and it rolled over, and, and it just needed some BOC comments to 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 do it. But you know, the question that I always get at these junctures is, okay, Blake, if you're gonna if you're gonna cover your short, which I'm not short. Again, I'm just saying, if I was short, I'd be covering here. But if 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 you're not short, would you go long? You know, because everybody thinks that if you're not bullish, you're automatically bearish, or if you're Great not point. bearish, you're automatically bullish. And I'll tell you, I would be very hard pressed to be long right now. Yeah. You know, I, I I would be protecting my shorts, covering my shorts, moving stops, maybe to above the 200-day moving average, doing something proactive. But yeah. if you're trying to trade counter trend, I think that's pretty dangerous. I, you know, what I wouldn't be surprised of, I wouldn't be surprised that we sit here <clears throat> and we do this. We just sit in this very little, you know, we consolidate right here. And then if the dollar weakens following the FOMC that we break lower. I, that's what I foresee is being more of a realistic situation. So if you know, you made to, a great point, Blake, because you know what? I did this for so many years in my career. Like say, for example, no, I want to sell the rally back towards 33 and a half. Uh, I go, well, you know, if I, I think it's going back to 33 and a half, why don't I just ride I that move? Long. Yeah, why don't I yeah. just get long and make money riding it up? Because that's not the trade. The trade's to sell it if it happens. Uh, right, exactly. And But, you know, a lot of people do that. They go, well, why should I sit here if I think I'm? it's going to rally back to three and a half? I'll get long and ride that too. But that's not the trade. Yeah, I, I, I feel, good morning, Blake, good morning, Dale. I feel that the, that the FX gods are going to throw you, their, their wrath upon you. You ungrateful guys. This thing gave you, I, I don't mean you personally, it gave us such a nice period of time that it was telling us, oh, this is a bear flag. Shit, I can't rally even if my life depends on that. When I break down, all hell is going to break loose. And then it did. How can you expect now um, a pullback? I'm half kidding, of course, but you understand what I mean. Yeah. It, yeah. it gave all the warnings, all the warnings. As you said, rally could not, um, uh, oil, uh, um, oil was dumping and it could not rally even to test the 38.2. Um, then we were barely holding um, a shorter term ascending channel, not the one uh, Blake was showing before on the way up, then it was holding um, barely the, the bear flag um, support. And then we get the trigger that we needed, which, we, which was what? Uh, a more hawkish uh, Bank of Canada statement. And even when that happened, it didn't immediately plunge like 150 pips. It plunged 30, 40 pips. And then it, it was contemplating with the idea of holding 134 or not. When 134 gave away, as you understand, positioning was immediately, everybody was like, oh, I was long. I'm bailing out from here. That's it. That's it. You know, this thing is not going to end up well. Yeah, and, and, and if you think that positioning is flipped on, on this on this 150 pip move, you're wrong. I mean, the, 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 we're lucky if, 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 if maybe even an eighth of that has shaved off. I mean, this positioning is going to take a while to flip. And so... You got this move down, and I'm I'm still I'm I'm pretty sure there's a lot of traders that are sitting here going, okay, we've got to hold this trend line. I'm not giving up until we break below 132. Below 132, then I'm going to start to really bail. Blake, I, I know I know that you're more than uh, busy to pay attention to that because I know very well that 
you don't rely on any bank uh, analysis to figure out what you're going to do with the markets. Uh, you, you're past that since decades ago. But I don't know if your eye caught how many analysis was uh, was coming out from the banks when we were actually testing the highs close to 138 that they were saying next stop 145, oh, next stop yeah. the previous high at 147, etc. Et 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 the same I remember when we were uh, almost at the high uh, in uh, 2016, January, uh, when we were almost at the high at 146, we went almost to 147. I remember bank analysis coming out, 155, 160 is not impossible, blah, 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 blah. And until all those guys, you know, flip their opinions and start getting berries, I really believe, I mean, I'm, I'm just reiterating what we're seeing, I'm enhancing, we can easily be a lot lower than here, a lot yeah. lower. If the dollar helps, we can be a lot lower from here. And I was actually showing, I don't know if you, if you stayed on because you, you had to trade, I was showing yesterday the long-term um, chart of the USD CAD, and I, I, I was saying that the reversal from 147 was impulsive, while the um, while this uh, grind higher was extremely choppy and overlapping, and I believe that uh, the next move is going to be lower, and uh, that means that if I'm right, the next move is not going to be 100 or 200 pips, you know, it's it's going to be quite a lot. Uh, so I think that uh, if that proves to be the case, if this is just a very prolonged correction after a first uh, leg uh, lower in USD CAD, uh, people still have a lot of um, downside they can benefit from uh, in, in the following weeks, months. Of course, nothing. And also, guys, uh, take a look. Take a look at the weekly look by Gregor Horvat on USD CAD, and uh, I do believe that this count is in play now. So, you know, a lot of people that feel late because, you know, they're not short from 35, um, take a look at, uh, I could show it, I have it up, or you could show it, guys. Freebie Dale. Huh? Freebie Dale. <laughs> not Freebie Steve, Freebie Dale. Oh, yeah, Freebie. But I anyway, that that's it, yeah. All right, here. All right, so anyway, Greg, uh, yeah, Greg's count takes it down towards 23. Um, want me to show it? What the I'm showing it right now. Oh, okay, thanks, Blake. Yeah. So that's the way it looks. And and Steve was talking about that move down happened uh, from the highs in a matter of two, three weeks, and we've been moving sideways for two, three months. So that's a classic definition between impulsive and corrective, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, I mean, you know, Steve would probably be better, better – um, Yes, impulsive moves are uh, strong. Uh, they don't give uh, much um, opportunity, you know, for big pullbacks or whatever. Uh, they they do not see prolonged overlapping moves. They, they they move in straight lines as much as that's possible in in a market. While corrective moves usually the vast majority of their legs are exactly what we've seen in this chart that uh, uh, Blake shows at the moment. They're extremely choppy, extremely overlapping. Um, they might take a long time to cover uh, a small distance in comparison to the time it took, etc., etc., etc. I mean, it's very easy for somebody to recognize an impulsive move in comparison to, uh, to a corrective move when you put them one next to, to each other. They, they have completely different characteristics, I mean. So, Blake, you were talking about um, yesterday that it's such a key day for the dollar because the market knows the Fed's going to go. Maybe the statement's surprising, but, you know, most – even when uh, Janet does something hawkish, she talks like a dove. So uh, you were saying that, you know, if we were raise rates and the dollar doesn't rally off of that, how vulnerable it could be. So, yeah, and, and I still think the, the dollar Canadian is very vulnerable in that sense, too. That's why I I, I would prefer, you know, I'm obviously not going to sell the dollar Canadian now. i, I got to wait for some sort of rally. The question is just how, how much of a rally are we going to get in the dollar Canadian ahead of the FOMC tomorrow, and I, and I don't know that answer. I mean, you know, I, I, at this point in time, I'm kind of hoping that we just get a rally to 133. But that, that may not even happen. I mean, we may just sit here and consolidate between you know 40 and 60 
and going into tomorrow, it, this is a pretty aggressive move um, lower. And so I don't know how much downside there is. And so, uh, and I still think it looks vulnerable. I mean, just from a, you know, A, B, C, D standpoint, uh, the, the dollar Canadian points to 131.38, you know, it's another yeah. 100 points away from here. And, yeah. and if we drop through this trend line, then I think we're going way farther than that. So, um, you know, it's, it's, it'll be, it's, it's going to be really interesting to see how the Canadian responds tomorrow and how the dollar responds as well. Um, you know, I'm looking at, you know, in, in regards to the dollar, I mean, you cannot deny that the euro is holding up very well. The euro is, it, it barely has pulled back 24% of this move since these French elections. I mean, you look at the, yeah. the post-election low here at 108.50 to 112.80, we, 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 we can't even pull back more than 24%. You know, what's that say about the euro dollar, or you could say the dollar right now? I mean, it, the dollar is, is on really weak footing. Um, you know, I know... The I pattern know. looks incomplete to me, too, Blake. You know, uh, you know, I, uh, my one-trick pony, uh, three-drive formation, we have two. Um, I, I would actually like to see one more push-up in euro um, for a possible short for a three drive, especially if the RSI stays under 70 on the next push up. Yeah, I mean, it, you, you know, we might get that push up to what I, I've, I've been looking at is channel resistance, maybe around 114 and change. Yeah. You know, I, I think that's entirely possible. I, I, but I, again, I have to, I have to say that if you're out there you know, getting long the dollar, you're probably a little concerned right now because it's just not, there, there's been no upside follow through whatsoever in the dollar it's been you know very very lackluster and and so that's why i think that it you know we have to watch the buy the rumor sell the news tomorrow and uh you know if uh, if 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 the dollar you know trades heavy following the fomc I mean, they're, they're, you know, I, also, I know Steve isn't going to want to hear this, too, but you look at the cable. The cable's actually looking really good today, um, you know, the, the, relatively speaking. I mean, we've pulled back, and, you know, we're, we're, yeah. we're, we're, we're kind of bouncing. You know, there's a lot of people that are talking about the cable, about, you know, the, the U.K., you know, going to witness a soft Brexit, which isn't necessarily – you know, may not be as bearish for the for the pound as, as people thought. You got to be careful because the pound's holding this little breakout point, and and um, you know, I'm starting to look at these cross rates. Well, I should say I'm starting to look at. I'm already buying some of them. Um, it, it, look at look at pound like Aussie. The, yeah, look at the pound New Zealand. Okay. Pound New Zealand's at a six one eight retracement of this entire move. Okay. Nice. Yeah. Pound Aussie is at a fifty percent retracement. Now we do have. Uh, uh, um, New Zealand GDP tomorrow. We got Australian employment data tomorrow, but still, yeah. I mean, this is a 200-day moving average on the pound Aussie. Uh, pound New Zealand, you know, is is pulled back to the 618. And if you guys don't recall, I was long the pound New Zealand, um, you know, two months ago, and I sold them up. I, I, I sold the pound New Zealand in the the, the high 180s. You know, so I, I'm 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 looking at this as more of a value proposition down here again. And um, you look at like, you know, the euro pound just hit the, uh, the the 618 retracement, or really damn close to, you know, this, yeah. the 618 retracement. Oops, uh, they didn't want to do that. So you can see this. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, we came really close to 618 retracement. So the the risks at this point in time. For a pound the bounce, euro, euro is, bound. If you if you go a little bit back on the chart, if you zoom out a little bit on the chart, uh, where, where we bounce from, when we where, where we got rejected from, if you if you draw a little bit of a channel, a little bit of an area, you will see that its previous lows, that previous high, you have at B. So that area that rejected us is not only very close to the 61.8. But it's also an area of interest in the chart in uh, uh, zone. yeah in October November uh, 2016, yeah. and then again at the high uh, that we saw um, early 2017. So uh, you know I had this area drawn, and I, I I also see this rejection. 
and they and they, not only that I can also <clears throat> count five waves up uh, from um, uh, the see? low of April so okay, C, uh, from C that Blake has labeled yeah from C to yeah exactly so I totally agree with you and I totally agree with you um, I, I see pound Aussie and pound Kiwi um, having uh, several areas of interest and the rebound the beginning of a possible rebound does look interesting so so I'm totally with you there yeah so I, I mean it, you get you if, if if the dollar does weaken uh, following the FOMC and and, and remember that and and I, and I can't I have to I have to point out here that the dollar is you know within striking distance and we already respected the 618 retracement anybody who's trading the long uh, long dollar at this point in time for a, a bounce here knows the risk you know the risk is below 9640 on the dollar index period end of story there's no you know if and or buts about it uh, I, you know if if you break below that 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 low here you know the dollar is going to get wallop because everybody's trying to trade long you know everybody and and it makes sense I mean I understand why from a technical perspective but again if you're trying to trade on the long side of the dollar you know your risk so that means if you break below this 9640 the the, the risk of a much further decline is high now and so that's why I think that we should keep a really close eye on, you know, if the dollar does break down, what does the pound do? You know, what does the euro do? What does the dollar yen? I mean, you look at the dollar yen, the dollar yen has this down sloping trend line. I mean, we're, we're bouncing back up towards it again, but with stocks, you know, with stocks, I still think it's vulnerable. I know S&P futures are up right now, but, but the S&P bounced to the 618 retracement um, overnight. Uh, of this uh, of this move from Friday, so if you look at the you know look at the Friday move, we're at we're at the six one eight right now. You know these are all you know if the if the stock market starts to roll over, the dollar yen could come under pressure. So these are all just you know you you see the dollar hovering around some pretty major areas here. So tomorrow is going to be really interesting. I don't know how much movement we're going to get today. Uh, I think the risk right now. Uh, for today is watching like the S&P and seeing what the S&P does here, you know, because we've had a nice recovery from these lows. Um, I, I venture to guess that we're kind of we're going to come down and see these lows uh, probably, you know, this week or next. Um, so, you know, because when you get a spike low like that, they, usually those those levels will get retested. So um, it'll be interesting to see if the if the S&P you know, if we get a move down there, you know, how's the dollar going to respond to that? Uh, you know, we, we, and we don't, I don't have an answer yet, but I think it's, I think it's something that we need to pay very, very, very close attention to. The market, the market at the moment is pricing 96% probability of rate, rate hike. Personally, I don't understand that. Uh, I don't understand it because I think that the chances that they will not hike are zero, absolutely zero. And the reason I'm saying that is that we have n never ever seen a central bank go against those odds because then it is a matter, especially now in the uh, in the case of the Fed, that it has been guiding for a rate hikes. It's not that the market is expecting it. The, mar the market is expecting it because the Fed has done as much as possible to guide us uh, through a hiking cycle. So um, I believe that even if for some reason they, did, they, they didn't want to do it, they would still do it so they don't lose credibility. Um, so I believe that the chances of a hike tomorrow are like 99.999% and not 96%. But we are definitely not going to see a move after uh, the hike just because the Fed hiked. You know, yeah. I, I'd like to touch on Aussie Kiwi just for a minute because Blake pointed out the defined risk on Aussie Kiwi for a long. And uh, something I've learned uh, over the years on Aussie, uh, when you get to a major support level, like we had that major trend line it came off of, and it doesn't get going, and it's going to give pe it's given people one, two, three, four, five, six days to get long against that level. It makes me skeptical because markets usually don't accommodate you for the good trades vis-a-vis uh, -vis Canada. Right? Use the gun. Yeah. Use the gun. Because it, the it, it didn't give you, a, you know, it, it, 
it just went. And now what everyone's looking for a rally and, and Blake's rightly pointing out that uh, maybe we don't even get one. Maybe all we do is hold for a day or two. And to me, this is starting to look vulnerable and I think that we're gonna clean out uh, the lungs under that 104 level. I we could, could just, I just could make, Go ahead. I was just gonna say, just remember that we have two pieces of data tomorrow um, that are dependent on this move. And the reason why we're not gonna get a move ahead of that is because we have those two pieces of data we, with Aussie employment and New Zealand uh, um, uh, right. GDP. No, no one wants to pull the trigger on the long side down here. Not today. You, okay. you know, you, you know, I, I actually sold some yesterday uh, yeah. up here, 104.85. And, you know, I'm, I'm waiting for following tomorrow's data to see what I'm going to do with this thing. So, yeah, I know, mean, that, it could, it could hold, it could retest it and hold. Yeah. Um, or it could just gap above your uh, little downtrend line. Yeah. I, I'm, just, I'm just always skeptical when markets come off a major support and resistance and you didn't act that day when it did or the day after. And Mr. Market's saying, okay, Dale, well, you know, you missed the entry five days ago, but, you know, you're a nice guy. I'm going to give you a chance to do it uh, after you've had a week to think about it. Capiche? Right, right. <laughs> well, hey guys, um, I'm, I got to be around for the for the New York Open, so I'm going to pass it over to you, Steve. Um, if if you want to expand on some of the things that I talked about, or maybe some charts that uh, sure, you've got, sure. so I, I, I'll gladly do that. Um, okay. Thank you, thank you so much for thanks, dropping thanks. in, buddy. My my pleasure, you guys. Have a great one, and uh, we'll talk to you guys later. Bye bye. Okay, uh, okay having to do Obi, with, uh, give us a rundown on what's on your radar screen in front of the Fed. Having to do with those uh, with those Kiwi now, uh, besides kidding, <laughs> having to do with those Kiwi, I'm with you. I think that it's very likely to see a new low <clears throat> to test this ascending trend line that we had shown back then. So yes, okay. it, is a it is a likelihood this uh, this uh, formation uh, for the time being doesn't look much bullish, but since as Blake mentioned very well, uh, we we have event risk coming up. You never know what's going to happen, but you know it would be no surprise to see something like boop a new low, get people frustrated, bailing up whatever longs they have built, um, getting perhaps people you know thinking okay this is thing is breaking down and then then doing a, a better reversal and retracing some. But as as I've said you know Aussie Kiwis. Yeah, you know, it's. I mean, there are much more interesting pairs to watch. So, you know, why lose much time on that? We we have other very nice things to to watch. Um, and uh, a good example, uh, Blake gave us. Uh, you know, um, uh, the pound kiwi and the pound pound Aussie to talk about. So I'm going to be brief with that. We've seen the story here, descending channel. Then it becomes a triangle. Then it breaks out. Then it accelerates. Then it plunges, and now what do we see? We almost tagged equality of A, B, C. Um, if somebody is asking why I'm not taking this low as uh, the end of uh, the first leg is simply because from an Elliott Way perspective, this is, let's say, A, and then um, a, this is 1 or A, it doesn't matter, and then it's um, a, B, C, the correction. So this this is the middle of the correction, not uh, you know not not the low point, the beginning of it. And then we have another leg which would uh, actually tag equality, which is the ideal target for correction. Let's say at 174.76, we almost got there. Ideally, we would have seen, uh, we would have liked to see a reaction from the confluence of the 200 DMA and this zone that we had marked since before, but you know things don't always, uh, you know, go, you just mark some zones and sometimes they work, sometimes they don't. Um, so don't expect perfection at the crab table. <laughs> yes. You know what, I, uh, even though it's not, uh, even though it's not a bear flag, Lucas look is nice. Uh, yes, I know I agree it with can't Lucas. be a flag. But yes, it, yes, it, you, it, you, it, you can't call it a flag uh, simply because of the definition, but it is what he means it is. I mean, you know, right. we, we cannot use the word because of the definition is giving us a strict 
um, length in comparison to the pole of, of, of the flag formation. But this is exactly what it is. It's, it's, a, it's a choppy, corrective, prolonged consolidation. That's what I believe. That's what I said yesterday as well. So I'm uh, I, I, having to do with the point he wants to pass. I'm 100% in agreement with Luca. We just cannot use the, the term because, you know, the theory tells us that, uh, you know, this term is not valid after you exceed, uh, uh, after the um, uh, flag uh, exceeds more than 50% of the pole. Um, okay, uh, I know you're talking this, but we're getting a request. Since you traded a nice scale in trade and got out well in silver, uh, Pedro's interested in your sure, view. I'm going to show it. Uh, let, let me finish with well this. I just wanted to say don't get miscarried. We are seeing a nice bullish hammer today. But first of all, we're still in the middle of the day. Not exactly in the middle, but you understand what I mean. Uh, yeah. We still have a lot of price action ahead of us. Um, one daily hammer is not enough to to say okay this is it the uh, you know we we got an uh, mostly an equality of legs lower this is a hammer that's it uh, i'm going long i mean your chances are, are low we need more evidence to call this as a low in uh, pound kiwi but you know this is now starting to become interesting uh, as uh, as blake said so uh, let's have a look at silver since he wants before we we go to other things. Okay, silver, silver, silver. Silver is now testing uh, almost. Well, it testing. almost, yeah, almost went to the level you drew the other day. Yes, and for, it's for also, also, also yes, uh, exactly. Also, the 61.8 is just a little bit lower from here. So, what's missing now from the mix to say, okay, nice, let's let's explore the, possi the possibility of uh, looking at the uh, top side again some kind of a reaction we might because you know this is a nice timing we might get this reaction from uh, tomorrow's event risk uh, because the dollar tomorrow is of course going to affect a lot um, the metals not only because uh, they're both priced uh, in US dollars I mean we're looking at silver and gold uh, you know in, in comparison to US dollar instead of the euro or whatever so it but, could be uh, what's happened in the precious metals could be uh, real rate. sell the rumor yeah. but sell the rumor by the fact yeah. and the Fed Not only that, they're going they're going to be they're going to be affected by whatever we see in uh, we know but by by a change in in the real rates uh, so and you know uh, forward guidance by the Fed tomorrow is going to be important uh, for mar for shaping market expectations that's going to shape the expectations for real rates that's also going to move the dollar so tomorrow you should expect to see most likely some volatile price movement from uh, the metals that doesn't that doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to see a reversal we might see an exhaustive move lower and then a reversal we might see um, a consolidation. I, I doubt it. I believe that most probably tomorrow we're going to have we're going to have some uh, violent move uh, coming in here sooner or later. But we're going to see. So this is not the place to be long, having to do with timing, because you can easily see another move lower. But if I see a rejection uh, tomorrow, then I'm going to start looking, you know, for opportunities to, to to be long again. But for the time being, there is absolutely no chance that I'm getting involved until. Uh, tomorrow no, no chance at all I mean you yeah. want to do it uh, if you have a plan in place uh, you know fine but personally I just I just want, don't want to do it now yeah, you know, I, it's my philosophy and I do teach this Steve you know I, I'd rather be flat or very close to flat or if I have a position tighten stops to break even or profit stops because you know, red events like the Fed, even though it's pretty much anticipated, or an NFP, um, you know, I'll use the example uh, when I was running LAR uh, before an NFP, uh, someone after the NFP came to me and said uh, it was a weak number and the euro rallied about 100 pips or better in, you know, five minutes and they came up to me and said, Dale, I bought the euro right before the NFP. You know what my answer to him was? Good guess. That was my answer. So that was playing roulette. Yeah, that's all it is. It's a binary bet. It's a coin toss. It's really not trading to me. So I'd rather yeah, although, react. Although, I have, although I have to stress out, I have to stress out here 
that sometimes events which are binary, there is no disagreement with that, do provide opportunities uh, to position ahead of them. When, when okay. that happens, that happens when the market um, uh, considers something to be a binary event but gives a very low probability of one of the two outcomes uh, to materialize. For example, the Trump election. Um, and, and many other e events. So uh, you might have a binary event, but there are times that I have traded ahead of it. Why? Because I see the market thinking that uh, one um, outcome has, let's say, a 10% chance of happening, while personally, you can call it from experience, from instinct, from um, the data I've noticed, depends on the situation. Okay, well, we... We have I a real-time example of that. This is the most ex, uh, uh, highly anticipated red, uh, Fed rate hike in in memory for me. That it's it, it's almost 96 percent, 98 percent. That's a pretty high probability. So knowing that that the Fed's going to move tomorrow, here's a chance for you to uh, test your theory. What would you do in front of the Fed? In this case, nothing, because it's not about what percent. It's not only about what percentage. Because in this case, let me be clear. In this case, the market is not trading the hike or no hike. So tomorrow's event is not in my mind. You remember, I started talking in, by saying this. Tomorrow, in my mind, it's not about if the Fed is going to hike or not. I would bet my house that it will. Um, and you know the vast majority of market participants agree on that. The question is, what is the Fed going to give us along with the hike? Are they going to tell us, uh, listen, you know, um, it's uh, you know uh, we we are looking into hiking very soon again, and everything is looking great. The economy seems to be on its path. Uh, to growth, um, we're very happy with the labor market, etc., etc., etc. I mean, I don't think that you know. I just gave an extreme example of um, uh, language to follow the uh, decision. In this case, you're going to see a big rally, or are they going to be like very nimble, telling us that uh, you know they're monitoring some data, that perhaps they're not so happy with some other data, so they, they're going to be more careful in the following uh, weeks slash months. Um, that perhaps they have some other concerns, etc., etc., etc. So it, it's all about um, the, the forward guidance. Tomorrow it's not about the rate hike, it's about the forward guidance. And they cannot guess that. You know, I, I noticed, Steve, that Nick is in the house. Oh, she is. And, and uh, I just sent her a Skype. Uh, I'm, I'm wondering if she's busy trading oil right now, if she's slipping and sliding on the crude oil, or if she might have a chance to... Uh, share a few of her harmonic patterns with the crowd today. Uh, so, Nick? Hi, how are you? Hi, Nick. How's it going, Hi. my friend? I'm okay. What would you like to look at? Well, uh, I'm when you focus, ready, but I'll what, get it. Uh, besides, what, what, what do you want to show us? You, want, uh, you probably want to show us Bitcoin or something like that. No, no, no. Although all the okay. cryptocurrencies look good today. <laughs> but, um, no, no, no. That's... Um, no, I mean, what, no, do I, think, what do you think in going into the Fed? You know, normally I would say that um, a, a widely anticipated rate hike would be priced in, and so the dollar, the, and you would have seen the dollar rally into it. And I would say normally that that would be a sell dollar opportunity, but it's different with this one. You know, we've seen the dollar sell off for so long now. That I almost think that the Fed might, you know, say something. The Fed might come out quite hawkish, and we might um, see a dollar rally. Like it's certainly technically set up for me for the U.S. dollar to rally. So. Um, okay. Um, you know, Blake was showing the the Dixie pattern, and yeah. I, you know, I have a pretty good memory. Um, I think you had an important level that we didn't quite get to. In yeah, the I do. Like it, 
it's really yeah no we did we did actually finally get to it so okay. you know, it's, it's, it's right on a really important like bull bear line for me you know, the 23.6 retracement from the 2011 lows and so you know it's, it's going to be pretty decisive if we break it then we can say that the dollar has put in a top and uh, and is Nick, in a downtrend. Nick you want me to give you the screen so you can show what you're talking about. Okay. So there isn't anything under like you know maybe 50 points under the recent low. I, I okay. seem to remember so something like 95. Right. I'll show you. Uh, let me explain. Yeah I can explain okay. it. Hold on. Okay thank you Nick. No problem at all. Okay, so I'm just going to clean this up a bit so you can see uh, what I'm talking about because it's a bit messy in here. Uh, we still cannot see your screen, by the way. In, uh, I don't know, have you shared it? Okay. Can you see it now? Yes. Yes, now yes. Okay, cool. Okay, I'm just going to clean up these things, this rhyme, my writing on the chart so you can see. Okay, so it, in, in the, in the uh, dollar index, if this was wave one and this was wave two, then we've just had wave three and we're in wave four. And a common place for it to end is the 23.6 for retracement or the 38.2 of wave three. So from this low, I'm just going to put those those levels in and, and highlight them. So that would mean that we're either going to reverse from here, the 96.47 level, or the 91.93. And I what see. I've also put in here is this 236, because for me, as a FIB trader, like I put the, it on the whole low low because on this whole sequence because for me this shouldn't go below 9587 if we're going to stay in an uptrend okay but that is a shade under the low that and we're... that's a shade under where we are now okay, so we're on, that's what I so we're bouncing off 9647 right. and for me as long as we don't go below 9587 the US dollar index is still in an uptrend and that's so if they what try I'm and clean out so I'm the looking for bulls. reversals. Yeah, so if they try and clean out the weak bulls off last week's low. Yeah, then a spike I would try it down there at ninety five eighty seven. Yeah, I so can. a spike down to, to ninety five eighty seven, which is down here, that holds and you know why I would buy it down there, right? What do you call me, Mr. Blank Blank? No, Mr. Three Drives Pattern and there's your three <laughs> drives pattern. Exactly. Okay. <laughs> That would be a great setup. From this for high, yeah. So, you know, it all just looks like kind of, yeah, ready. We're just waiting to see what the Fed does. And more importantly, you know, how people react. So, You know, when I golf, I'm better with my three wood than my driver. I, you know, I don't golf at all. Uh, so okay. Well, I don't either. I don't even know what they some. are. That's yeah. so bad, isn't it? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. With you there, Nick, I have no, the no connection to sport. If I'm not looking at the markets, I'm asleep. So. Well, you, you know, I, I would think with your military service, uh, you might, like I play army golf, left, yeah. right, left, right, you know, I'm on both sides of the fairway. Anyway, um, so Sorry. that's what that's what I'd be looking for if we get a kind of a dollar negative reaction tomorrow. I would be using dollar weakness to try uh, the long side of the dollar, maybe the short side of euro or pound or something like that. But, and definitely, okay, the pound is the weakest one. And yeah. here we are. We've broken below this 23.6 Fibonacci level. So 23, you know, as long as we stay below sort of 23.60 in the pound, it's a sell. We, we have got quite big support at 126 but if that goes well then we're going all the way back to the bottom of the channel here which is down at 123.15 you know so I read a, a quite nice I read a report uh, by Martin Armstrong and uh, the fact that the pound going into the election couldn't get over that 970 level his yeah. long-term monthly targets are still intact and that's a 103k are you talking about One, euro sterling or, or pound sterling 
I'm talking about uh, uh, GBP USD that. Uh, oh yeah, yeah. He's, yeah, he's looking for 103. That's he's Mark looking for 103. Armstrong. Okay, wow. Okay, I'm going to go to my monthly chart, and I'm looking for 117, and I'll tell you why. Okay, because. Um, load up okay so for me this was an, a, a big abc and the monthly from this uh, 1985 low and yeah. 117.33 is the 886 fib retracement and a back pattern so that's what i'm looking for that's why i'm looking for that level um yeah that's the next okay. one but 103 would be a butterfly and, and long um long uh, bearish runs and bull runs do tend to end on butterflies so that actually... we're looking at one or three Dale uh, you said Martin Armstrong yeah you know, he's a legend Lowe. he's a legend uh, yeah he is actually. he's uh, the forecaster uh, his uh, his life story was uh, the government wanted his model and he wouldn't give it up he actually did some time but Martin Armstrong um, his system's called Socrates. His model goes back, I don't know, 700 years or longer, and uh, you know, really has a great reputation for calling turns. And yeah. he's a pretty good technician short term. So he felt that because the pound was turned back last month into the election, couldn't get over that 130 level, that uh, he still sees the potential for that one, 103 level. Well, it's quite interesting how year is sterling kept going and here it is back above the 50% retracement so the 50% retrace from the uh, October 2016 highs I think that's you know on target for nice harmonic patterns now um, as we discussed so we closed above these closes as well so that's bullish we, I think we're looking at an inside day today uh, in euro sterling but I think that continues higher Okay. Yeah, and you were on that from the beginning of April. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> uh, what about your What about Euro Blake saying uh, talking about its resilience? To me, it looks like the dollar. So it, um, I I would like to see one more push up in Euro. You have anything just above the high we made last yeah, week? Yeah. No, yeah. Like Euro. Yeah. One fourteen twenty. Like the okay. Euro. If you look. You know how some pairs and some markets have fib levels that they like more than others? The yes. euro likes the 78.6. And the 78.6, because if this was an ABC bullish down, and if the euro really has put in a low low that it won't go below, then, yeah, we're going to go back to 114 and the 78.6. And we're going to okay. draw this trend line properly, and that will take us there. So... Um, let me get down and just show you. So uh, anyhow, everything would align nicely if we saw another. Uh, so yeah, so so this trend line tomorrow. and the seven, yeah, the seventy-eight point the six. Yeah. Okay. So what we would see is a spike up into this uh, seventy-eight point six retrace level, and uh, and a high there. And, you know, reversals at a 78.6 fib always go back to the 38.2 next. So that's all the way down then to 108.65. Okay. Yeah. Nice if we reverse. Nice look. What else, is, what else is on your radar screen? How about oil, Nick? Uh, yeah. You know, I, look, I look at this oil chart, and, you know, everyone keeps trying to look for a bottom. And, so here's the continuous uh, chart. Yeah, so, so, yeah. so. The target from this, if this was a head and shoulders pattern, then right. the pattern target for that is in the mid 44s. The 2.618 from extension from these swings is down here, and it's also a back pattern. It's the 886 retracement, and you can see that this rally from last week has the shape of a, a bear flag. I think it's inevitable, and remember this is the W. TI continuous chart, it's inevitable right. that we test 45 and probably mid 44s. And if I go to July 
features. This is exactly the same look. We've almost tested the, uh, that low, but um, it's exactly the same pattern. It's that 886 that we're looking for, and that's 4503 in the July futures. So, um, and we're at 46. So we've got another buck of downside, and I think we could see a bottom. Okay. Uh, so, when you when you say a bottom, Nick, you mean uh, about, before a corrective a, move higher? A bottom or, for a corrective move higher. Yeah. Okay. So, well, so you you consider the trend to 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 be lower in general? I do. Yeah. Okay. But I'm open. I'm open to another complete leg high you know that could take us back to you know 54 55 and and it, you know at least 53 in a retest you know we if we made an abc from this low this is july futures prices but if we made an abc from that sharp sharp low at where equal measured move that takes us back to 53.20 and a retest of that 23.6 and then i think if we fail there we could see one final leg lower uh, I really do think that we'll probably, you know, bottom, yeah, around 40 by the time it does finally bottom. But this is a bullish pattern, and I think, yeah, we could see a big ABC that would be equal to the one from the Melo. Okay, and it uh, looks so like uh, be... Ash or a reef. A reef is uh, so we'd be a follower. At He's a follower of Armstrong, and he has the same area. Armstrong saying uh, short at 114 euro. So uh, there's some. Uh, oh, 114 as well, yeah. And you yeah. know that would that would line up with that level that we've got on the dollar index chart. Um, right. And provided they don't all go, like I don't see like really, you know, the a euro has been cable. much stronger than the others. And so as right. long as cable doesn't join the party. Um, that should keep the dollar index in about the right place as well, yeah. Okay. Thank you so much, okay. Nick. No, very welcome. You have any more questions for Nick, Steve? Anybody um, want anything? No, uh, I, I don't know if, um, if if Nick, I think you had, um, you showed us last week, a friend is asking about gold, I was about to go over that, but but why don't you have a look at uh, gold in the shorter term? I remember I'm that. Much you... I'm much more bearish than everyone else. <laughs> I know, I know. <laughs> well, well, my last week. I, I'm hoping your 880 target gets hit sometime this year. Yeah. Okay, so the, my key support, where I'm wrong or you're, you know, for me, is going to be, we're, we're going to decide this at uh, 12.55. So which is the 23.6 I think if you know I think if if it is a bullish breakout and we we are going to continue higher then we we shouldn't go below 1255 and if we do then it was a false breakout and there's a good chance that we're going to know tomorrow because I I expect a decent amount of volatility in the precious metals tomorrow <laughs> yeah and and it's um, you know silver is much much more bearish as well and I think silver is a behaves better technically as well so uh, sorry that's just where I was at. but you're Sylvia, looking at what you're looking at Steve that same area for a bounce yes yes yeah. so we'll see but I love well, confluence between the different methods <laughs> you know, so which which uh, by the way also proves that uh, you know the at least the uh, methods of technical analysis uh, that have become popular have not become popular by accident. I mean, I, I've seen with my own eyes plenty of times. Although I don't use it, it's it's the only uh, technical analysis method that I'm not uh, using more or less, which is harmonics. Um, I've seen it work plenty of times. I mean, I mean Nick's predictions are. Uh, almost two out of three times absolutely spot on. Um, I, I'm a big believer in Elliott Wave. I've, I've seen it work, you know, consistently of, uh, over and over again. But even uh, basic tec technical analysis, um, um, you know, pro provides amazing uh, opportunities. And it's not by accident that um, the methods confluence because they also confluence in the way they see things. I mean, for example, 
uh, Nick, A, B, C, D is a three-wave correction on an Elliott wave, correct? Exactly. Yeah. Yes. So you see that each method might have different names, uh, but they do look the structures of market with the same set of eyes, Dale. And that's the reason. Well, I don't have yeah. a guest today, Steve. I had to reschedule it. And it's going to be a great guest. She's actually a certified hypnotherapist and uh, Reiki, uh, 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 NLP, everything. Uh, Louise is going to be with us a week from Friday. And, uh, you know, I'm a big believer in guys like Robert Proctor about, you know, uh, you know, if you need a new paradigm and you can apply it to trading, and I think it's going to be a, an excellent webinar. She's actually developed tapes to help traders um, overcome some of uh, the psychological barriers. Because, you know, we could talk about charts and uh, counts and objectives, but trading, like real estate's location, 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 yeah. trading is psychology, psychology, psychology. For sure. So, um, and that's, that's the reason why the patterns repeat uh, over and over again because the price action is, uh, is being indicated by, uh, you know, the, the, the psychology, the way they, the market participants perceive uh, the moves and that's why they keep producing the same kind of reactions to the same kind of price actions. That's why we yeah. have managed to develop all those methods of technical analysis and they do work, you know, way more often than, than they don't. Because in essence, what, what cannot be tamed, what cannot uh, be changed is the nature of humans. And, you know, as long as uh, humans in, in a decent amount, uh, you know, influence the way the markets move, and they say in a decent amount because, unfortunately, we all know that not only humans move the markets nowadays. Uh, you know, this is a but hypnotherapist, you said. Yeah, and, yeah. and, and, and also... Um, that interview that you posted on Skype, uh, I actually think cyborgs are going to be better traders than human beings. Yeah. Um, that guy that you talked about, Bregman, Steve Bregman, um, he used to take on, he used to like the fades uh, bank intervention in, on the IMM at the Merck. And one of his favorite sayings was, be a machine. And that's eliminating the emotions from your trading. Just be a machine. So um, interesting you found that interview. Yeah, I think that I think it's really important that we do things to preserve mental capital. Because, you know, mental capital is as important as the money in our accounts, you know. And so you don't do things that will upset you or don't take really big losses take them while they're small losses and preserve your mental capital because you, know, you need to be confident and and unafraid to trade well and yeah, uh, so. yeah you know I if anyone in the crowd is uh, hearing themselves say this before they do a trade I hope this one works don't trade yeah exactly okay don't trade uh, really, you need to almost like a warrior mentality that, okay, Mr. Market, I've done my work. Uh, I know what contingencies or confluence is uh, giving me a setup, compelling me to assume risk. Go ahead, Mr. Market. Prove me wrong. Or say goodbye to the money. Like, know your risk and say goodbye to it when you put it on. And then if it works, it's a bonus. You know? Yeah. Oh, that's, that's a yeah. way to look at it. Yeah, yeah. But, but don't, don't. oh my God, I hope this one works. Yeah. That's a defeatist attitude right away. So, so here's I my dollar, have... yeah, I'm just going to quickly show you this because this fits with what we were discussing of one more push of dollar weakness before we bottom. So the dollar yen loves it. 886 for retracement, which is down here at 108.80, 108.81, and that's also 1618. So I think that... I've marked it as really good support, and then I expect a rally from there, a good rally in the dollar yen. So okay. this is my dollar yen. So uh, so dollar weakness uh, 
should be viewed as an, a fading opportunity in the next 48 hours or so. In my technical opinion, okay. but the Fed can always run that for you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. all those, yeah, yeah. So it you said it has to be much, much here for us to do it. But they may, <laughs> they, they may uh, start talking about trimming their balance sheet. Uh, and most people are saying that's going to have more impact on the markets than raising rates because that's uh, basically you're, you're putting supply back on the market. When they're Look at starting. this tight range in the year again. This is yeah. going to pop soon. Yeah. Really tight range in the year. Yeah, that, that's important support, but uh, I don't know, Nick. The more we stay exactly on it, the less the likelihood that, uh, you know, we're going to bounce from it, in my opinion. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah no, no. Just when you get this tight consolidation like that, you get yeah. always a good breakout trade. So. Oh, yeah, for sure. For sure. Oh, that's my favorite. Three. My favorite. Yeah. When uh, Mr. Market says, well, you... You know, I know you didn't see that I was on support five days ago, but I'm going to hang around until you recognize it and let you buy it there. So, yeah, yeah that, there's a nice look. I think it's top, and what do, you, what do you think? This is where you wanted to buy it, Steve, down around the 122 level when we were trading up around 25 and a half. Yeah, 121.50 uh, to 122.50. I have uh, seven magic layers. moving averages say lower. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, I, I was liking, b before we even started the correction, I was liking a, a retest of 122.50 uh, and even perhaps a 121.50, which is the broken trend line. Uh, the 38.2 is is a little bit lower as well, so we can see another leg lower to retest that area. Actually, between 121 and 12160, uh, we have um, the 38.2. We have the broken uh, trend line that we broke on on the way up. Uh, that has now because it's descending. You know, the the more time passes, the more the lower it goes. So it was also at 12150, but now it's moving closer to 121. Um, so I, I want to see a reaction from there, but if you ask me what the next move from here is going to be, I'm totally in agreement. I just said so that the more we stay there without uh, being capable of rebounding, the more likely it seems that this is just a short-term consolidation be before one more leg lower at least. So uh, I'm, not, I'm not a buyer here no matter what. Uh, if if I'm wrong, I'm wrong. I just didn't participate. But uh, I'm I'm also in uh, in the opinion, as Nick said, one more leg lower, and then we see if we get any reaction from the from the support areas I'm watching. If we get a reaction from there and it starts seem constructive, sure, I'll be happy to buy it, but uh, not yet. Yeah. Well, you know, if if I think if this um, if if this slow breaks, this is a double top. So in classical charting principles, you know, our double top target is going to be down here. And I think that we're going to come and test the top of this gap and do a 61.8 retracement if we break here. So let's see actually where the double top takes us at least. So no to the 50. So my, sorry, hold on. So Euro CAD, Euro Yen, there's a theme here. And so it's going to be real interesting to see what happens to these yeah. pairs if we get one more So, pop. yeah, we're going to come down here all the way to the 61.8 if that's double by, top. By right? the way, not just now that we're talking about double top, when is the last time you remember a triple top working or a triple bottom working, Nick? Uh, dollar Canadian in 2010, 2011. Yeah, <laughs> that was a good triple top. <laughs> um, well, Go go ahead, uh, go ahead and top a Aussie card. Aussie, sorry, Aussie, Aussie Canadian. Yes. Okay. Uh, what time frame are we looking at? Daily, Daily. weekly. Daily. Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah, there what, is. What do you think? Um, and, and, we, and we're now retesting uh, the lows we found the previous two times. I, I personally... So, yeah, so this is a double top here, and this is the M in the middle. So if this breaks, we're going back to these lows. 
Agreed. And but then this is the double top. top here and here. So if these yeah. lows break, then we're going to new lows down here somewhere. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. That that's a chart I'm watching. So uh, you know, I, I told you to to show it. I don't know if you if you want to draw something on harmonics from a harmonics perspective, but I'm also looking uh, at this chart for some uh, for some time now, and I think it's going to go a lot lower if we if we actually fail uh, to hold these lows. So guys, I uh, no guests today, yeah, but the I lineup. Agree. The lineup the rest of the week is pretty good. Uh, Nick, maybe you know this lady from Twitter, Helene Meisel. Helene Meisler, I, Meisel. she's one of my favorite people yeah, to she, this interview. She's super yeah. smart too. Yeah, she's uh, you know married a commodity guy. She's been in the industry for a long time, writes for the street.com. Okay. She's gonna be with us tomorrow. And then I have Yohei Elam of Forex Crunch. I uh, used to work with Yohei over at FX Street for live events. He's excellent. It's also a very good site. Uh, Yohei is very good with the fundamentals. And then uh, Norm Winsky wants to come on. He wanted to come on last week um, to talk about some of his dates. And he said that after the 16th, most of his important dates are done for the month. So. That's our lineup for the rest of the week as far as guest speakers. Very nice. Very good. So, okay, so uh, I th so here um, this is quite interesting because this is going to be if if okay so if, if this double top goes and we come back down to here, I think that what we'll probably see is a Gartley. We're going to see a mar marginal new low. We're going to go to this seventy eight six retracement that'll be an ABC because that's not a true double top and and I think it'll get everybody short and I think we'll find some support around 95.55 maybe maybe but still I, that leaves a, a lot of room to the downside a lot of room yeah from here it's a lot of room yeah in fact that looks like where we're going so I, I'm totally with, you there. totally with you okay well I'll give you the screen back and um, Okay, so so I don't want, Nick, I don't want. I don't want to. I don't know if you want to. Um, uh, if you want to want to have a look at what I'm going to show now. I took the screen, by the way. Um, okay. I was about to show when you came on the pound Aussie. Uh, it would be nice if we had your uh, input as well. I think that the pound Aussie shows some promise here for three reasons. All these drawings, except this line and the rebound that I had it first on the upper uh, area here, uh, were, were, were there before now. So uh, we are currently creating a, a, a bullish engulfing. Uh, I really, really like that look. I'm afraid that I ha I can't stay though. I'm sorry. I'm going to have to go. Okay, Nick. Sorry. Okay, Nick. Thanks okay. for being here. See Thanks. you tomorrow. No Bye. Okay. All right. See you, my trading warrior sister. So, so go ahead, from, Steve. So from the pound crosses, um, I was about to show this when Nick came before, and the friend uh, reminded me because he asked. Uh, he said, "Oh, I missed, uh, you know, the pound pairs. Um, uh, can you please uh, show them?" I'm not going to go over again the ones we've shown, but you can you can find the webinar posted on our YouTube channel uh, in I don't know around three hours from now. <laughs> but I can I can tell you that uh, the best opportunity from a technical perspective, seems to be in the pound dose at the moment. Because I see a corrective move lower. Uh, we held the second zone that we had marked, which also um, hosts at the moment confluences with the 200 DMA. And right on this confluence of levels, we create, we are currently seem to be creating the daily candle that you see here. Um, which is a very strong um, rebound candle. So I'm going to wait to see um, how the end, um, how the um, day ends. But I'm liking what I'm seeing for the moment. So um, you know, I, I think best, uh, as we had said with Euro crosses uh, back some time ago, that um, uh, you know we saw best opportunities with Euros, and then we said, okay, it's time for the Eurocad. I think that from the pound crosses, now the first one 
to actually start showing um, uh, some uh, interesting patterns is this one. It's the pound dozy. So this is the first one I'm going to be long if uh, we indeed verify that uh, we're getting a reversal. Um, so nice that's sir. what I'm seeing. So that's what I'm seeing here. Now having to do, since Blake uh, actually more or less opened the day by mentioning this, having to do with, with uh, the cable, so just to have a look at the cable simply, um, we didn't reach this zone, we seem to be rebounding, we seem to be forming a like a tweezer bottom. Um, I'm personally still in the money on this trade. I'm going to see what happens and judge what I'm going to do from there. Uh, there is an opportunity that we with that we bounce from here. Personally, nothing has changed for me. I mean, I, I still believe that uh, the highest possibility is for another move lower. I very, um, I, I, I personally find it hard that we're going to see a new high from here. Of course, somebody can claim that this is an ABC, and it could it could actually be. But um, I, I think that any retest of 128 is going to be um, uh, taken as a selling opportunity from market participants once again. Uh, so nothing has changed in my point of view. I'm, I'm still expecting more likely to see lower prices than uh, uh, than higher before before we can actually talk about a, a, another bounce higher. So that's it with uh, uh, cable. Um, somebody asked about about palladium. I don't have much to say about palladium. The reason is because it uh, it left the parameters I had said to be so oh, again. A, you have a throwover. Yes, and the retest of that high. So somebody can claim that this is a double top. We got an initial rejection, then we made another effort. We we made an inside day. Today we we were almost having an inside day as well although we penetrated a little bit below yesterday's low in general we seem to be consolidating after a very strong uh, reaction from the uh, wedge support so um, so this is how i trade a throw over let it do whatever it wants to do in here and if your bias is to short palladium wait until it's back inside of the channel i, I agree yeah. with you I'm that, not that's I'm willing to I'm be short here. I, I'm, to, I'm totally in agreement, uh, Dale. I'm totally in agreement. I'm not looking to do something yet. Okay, somebody could have been uh, ballsy enough to say, okay, I'm going to short 9, 11, 80 because it was a previous high. Fine, if you did that, uh, well, you know, you, you could have booked some uh, profits. But personally, uh, you know, it doesn't fit my risk parameters anymore. If I see it penetrate uh, below again, and this ending up showing on the weekly chart like a, um, a false break higher intra-week, let's say, then I'm going to uh, reassess uh, the situation. Uh, now, another friend asked about um, gold. Uh, Nick has already uh, had a look at gold. Uh, I have the, absolutely the same view with her. I've drawn this, uh, this area here, which we also find the 50 DMA. I think that the break below this area uh, brings us back to the triangle, so then there is another support at 1240, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But it will, the more we uh, leave the double top, the potential double top area, the more uh, we get distance from it, the worse it looks uh, as price action. So, um, you know, I have no strong bias from here. This is going to be an excellent level to see gold bounce. So if you believe in, if you're convinced in the upside, this is the level uh, you should be looking to, to get involved again. But personally, I'm just going to be monitoring uh, ahead of tomorrow. I'm, I'm not looking to, to buy or sell gold at the moment. If you sold the double top after the first reaction here, good for you. Uh, and then I would still tell you that perhaps you should consider taking partial profits ahead of the Fed tomorrow now that we're testing support zone. You uh, never go break you never go broke taking partial profits, my friends. <laughs> yes. So uh, if you know how to manage the trade definitely. Yeah. Yes. Definitely, definitely. So um, Steve, uh, I was gonna just thank you for uh, your views. You have something else to show? 
No. Uh, uh, ah, one last thing. Copper. A friend is asking about copper, actually. Okay. Copper. Copper is extremely choppy. That's all I have to say about copper. Um, I was monitoring. I think that the move lower for copper from here was was quite clean. Why? Because we had this ascending wedge. That's another ending diagonal here. Um, so then we started getting a correction. The question is the following. Does does this move lower look impulsive to you? The answer is no, no. it's not. It's what we've said. It's overlapping, uh, yeah. it's, it's um, channeled, uh, it's well behaved. Personally, if you're asking me... And you know what, Steve, compared to a lot of other Trump trades that unwound and gave it all back, you're absolutely copper's right. holding up pretty well. Yeah, that was a Trump trade. Copper was part of it, a reflation trade. And it looks like it hasn't uh, even retraced 50% yes. of that move from yeah, the just, fall. And just look at it. It's, it's In general, if you look at it, uh, I mean, just uh, if we don't consider this little overthrow, we have spent all the time since November, November 2016 in a, in a very large range, just chopping around. So you want to tell me if I believe that this is a buy or a sell? Um, if I was forced to take a decision here and now, what I'm going to do with copper, seeing the impulsive move higher and a move lower that is definitely not impulsive, I would be a buyer. Now, would I feel comfortable doing that? No, I wouldn't. Um, so that, and we are currently in the middle, roughly in the middle of, of the big range we were talking about. So I don't know. Uh, copper is very, very choppy, very choppy and very mixed at the moment. There is no clear signal to say that okay, we had an impulsive move higher, the correction is uh, over. Uh, we we got this break of this descending channel, that might be a first sign, but then we retreated back into it immediately. I can give you some levels if you want. I mean, for Going example. Point. Yeah, I, I can give you some levels if you want. For example, um, a close above uh, 2.7 is going to be important for the bulls. Um, on the other hand, um, a close uh, below uh, 250 is going to be bearish. Uh, but still, you need to wait a break of the general uh, range to, to feel comfortable that you know what the next move is going to be. So that's my take on copper. I know it didn't help much, but... You know, sometimes not all markets are very clear or always. So that's the situation with copper. Another great session in the books for FACE. EuroCAD, remember, guys, you wanted to book part of it. I think, uh, you know, if we get that rally to 114 in Euro, we're going to have another chance to short EuroCAD. Some great looks by Blake. Some excellent views by Nicola Duke. And as always, my co-anchor here in FACE, Steve Volge, who's now a 37-year-old market veteran. And one day, please. <laughs> and one day. Thank you so much, Steve, for your, your looks today. No, thank, thank you, FACE. Thank, thank, you you thank you, FACE, for your attention. Uh, good hunting the rest of the day. Uh, you know, I'm keeping powder dry for after the Fed. But uh, we'll see where the markets are setting up uh, an hour or so during our session tomorrow. You want a song? Okay. All right. So we have a we have a Fed event tomorrow, right, Dave? So this is what amateurs do. Use max leverage when you trade the Fed. Turn a hundred dollars into 10K. But if you max out your leverage before the Fed, your account might be dead if you use max leverage. That's the opposite of use less leverage. I'm just kidding. Don't use max leverage. Let your trades breathe, and I'll see everyone tomorrow. Thanks again, Steve, and thank you, everyone. Glad you enjoyed, Tom.
Thank you, Valu, for all your hard work. Uh, remember that we post all these on our YouTube page. And hey, Sirik, how are you? Sirik's a new, uh, Diego's a new father, Steve. Remember what that was like? How old's your baby, Diego? A month old? One month, okay. Are you sleeping yet? All right, congratulations. This this is your long this is a long term trade. Aren't children yes. the longest term trade that you could take? By far. Maybe, <laughs> maybe even long definitely even longer term than a marriage at times because a marriage may not work out, but you're always a mother or a father. No and and you, if you want an analogy, I, I think that, uh, you know, that kids are uh, definitely a trade that's out of the money for a decent amount of time <laughs> before it reverses. <laughs> All right. But the most rewarding, too. So oh, thank yes. you, guys. Thank you, guys. I'll see everyone tomorrow. Adios. Remember, don't just count your pips, count your blessings. See you, Reef, and thanks for filling us in on what you get from Marty Armstrong. Good hunting. Adios, my trading warrior brothers and sisters. See you tomorrow. Cheers.